Hi, my name is Pamela Coons, Associate Professor of Medicine in the Division of Oncology at Yale School of Medicine and Yale Cancer Center. I'm excited to announce ASCO's new open access journal, JCO Oncology Advances. As the inaugural editor-in-chief, I hope to support JCO Oncology Advances to become the premier platform to bridge the gap between accessible scientific research and clinical care. Stay tuned for more information, including new article types, at ascopubs.org forward slash JCO Oncology Advances. We look forward to seeing your submissions in spring of 2024. This JCO podcast provides observations and commentary on the JCO article, addition of vincristin, irinotecan, to vincristin, dactinomycin, and cyclophosphamide does not improve outcome for intermediate risk rhabdomyosarcoma, a report from the Children's Oncology Group by Hawkins et al. My name is Alberto Papo, and I am a pediatric oncologist and head of the Division of Solid Tumors at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee. Investigators of the Children's Oncology Group, which will be referred to as COG, developed a prospective randomized study to improve the outcome of patients with intermediate risk rhabdomyosarcoma by comparing the addition of the doublet vincristin and irinotecan, which will be called the irinotecan arm, to standard vincristin, actinomycin D, and cyclophosphamide, which will be called the VAC arm, to VAC chemotherapy only. Intermediate risk disease comprises the largest group of patients with rhabdomyosarcoma and comprises patients with embryonal histology who present with tumors that are non-metastatic and unresected and arising on favorable sites, as well as patients who present with non-metastatic alveolar histology tumors. The authors nicely review prior failed strategies that were aimed at increasing the outcome of this group of patients, such as dose intensification of active agents, as well as the addition of novel agents that included iphosphamide, etoposide, and topotecan. Irinotecan is a prodrug that is converted to its active metabolite SN38 and inhibits topoisomerase 1. In a frontline trial of patients with metastatic rhabdomyosarcoma, this drug demonstrated a high level of activity with a 70% early response rate and an 8% disease progression rate. Based on strong preclinical and clinical data, this agent was incorporated into an upfront randomized trial for rhabdomyosarcoma, testing the benefit of adding vincristin and renotecan to standard VAC chemotherapy in intermediate risk patients. Eligibility criteria included patients with embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma who had stage 2 and 3 clinical group 3 disease and any alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma without evidence of metastasis. During the first 12 weeks of therapy, the two treatments were identical in duration of schedule with the exception of the substitution of renotecan for dactinomycin and cyclophosphamide at week 4 and for cyclophosphamide at week 7 and 10 in the renotecan arm. During the next 30 weeks, Irinotecan replaced actinomycin D and cyclophosphamide at weeks 16, 19, 25, 31, and 37 in the irinotecan arm. Patients were evaluated for responses at week 15, 30, and at the end of therapy. Radiation therapy, unlike prior COG studies D9803, started early at week 4, and the dose was determined by the clinical group and histology with doses ranging from 36 grade for those with clinical group 1 and 2 to 50.4 grade for those with clinical group 3 disease. The study was designed with an 80% power to detect an overall increase in the long-term event-free survival from 65% with VAC chemotherapy to 76% with a doublet VAC VI with a sample size of 486 patients. Between December 2006 and December 2012, there were 481 patients enrolled in the study, of whom 33 were ineligible. Of the remaining 448 eligible patients, 222 were randomized to the VAC arm, and 226 were randomized to the renotecan arm. The patient's characteristics were similar between both arms and to other previously conducted COG studies. There was a slight predominance of males, 61% of patients were between 1 and 10 years of age, and 71% of patients were Caucasians. Embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma was the predominant histology seen in 53% of the patients, and 86% had clinical group 3 disease. 
the most common primary site was perimeningeal, followed by bladder, prostate, extremity, and retroperitoneum. With a median follow-up of surviving patients of 4.8 years, the estimated four-year event-free survival was 63% for the back arm and 59% for the renotecan arm. The estimated four-year overall survival rate was 73% for the VARC arm and 72% for the irinotecan arm. There were no differences in radiographic response rates among clinical group 3 patients as assessed by institutional report at week 15 and no evidence of differences in outcome by treatment arm in the histologic subgroup analysis. When compared to the previous trial D9803, which had a slightly different eligibility criteria, there were no differences in event and overall survival for patients with alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma. However, patients with embryonal tumors had an inferior four-year event-free survival in this trial when compared to patients in the D9803 study, although the four-year overall survival rates were similar. The vast majority of treatment failures were due to tumor progression or recurrence, the four-year local failure rate was 22.4%, the four-year regional lymph node failure was 5.7%, and the four-year distant failure rate was 18%. Hematologic toxicity and febrile neutropenia were more commonly observed in the VAC arm, whereas diarrhea and mucositis were more prevalent in the irinotecan arm. Hepatopathy was more common in the VAC arm, and patients in the renotecan arm who developed grade 3-4 diarrhea were more likely to carry the UGT1A177 genotype. The authors conclude that the addition of increased in renotecan to a VAC backbone failed to improve the outcome of patients with intermediate risk rhabdomyosarcoma. However, the lower cumulative doses of cyclophosphamide in the renotecan arm which could potentially reduce the risk of infertility in selected patients, and the lower rates of hematologic toxicity in this regimen have provided a rationale for the COG to use a VAC irinotecan backbone in their currently upfront randomized trial for intermediate risk rhabdomyosarcoma. This trial highlights the lack of significant advances in the therapy of pediatric rhabdomyosarcoma, despite the fact that renotecan shows significant preclinical and clinical activity in metastatic patients with this disease. Similarly, in a previous study, the addition of another camptothecan, topotecan, failed to improve the outcome of intermediate risk patients despite promising clinical activity in newly diagnosed metastatic patients, suggesting that identification of novel agents based on their activity in phase two window studies for high-risk rhabdomyosarcoma is not an optimal method for selecting active compounds that could be incorporated into frontline studies for intermediate risk disease. As suggested by the authors of the paper just discussed, other novel mechanisms of drug testing, such as randomized phase two studies in recurrent disease, might offer alternative, more effective strategies for identifying agents to be tested in intermediate risk patients. In contrast to these results, the European Pediatric Soft Tissue Sarcoma Study Group has recently reported at the ASCO 2018 meeting improved outcomes for a similar population of patients when maintenance therapy with low-dose cyclophosphamide and venorelvin was added to a backbone of vincristine, ifosmide, and actinomycin D, which will be called VAI. In this trial, patients with non-metastatic incompletely resected embryonal rhabdomyosarcoma arising in unfavorable sites and localized alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma without nodal metastasis who achieved a complete remission after nine cycles, which is 27 weeks, of VAI with or without doxorubicin were randomized to stop treatment or receive maintenance therapy with six 28-day cycles of svinorelbin and cyclophosphamide. The study was initially designed with an 80% power to detect an increase in the three-year event-free survival from 55% to 65% with a hazard ratio of 0.67, but was then amended to allow detection of a relative reduction rate in the relapse rate of 50%. This trial accrued 670 patients, of whom 371 were eligible, and 186 were assigned to the standard arm and 185 to the maintenance arm. The clinical features were balanced between the two groups, and with a median follow-up of five years in surviving patients, the three-year event-free survival and overall survival in the maintenance arm and the standard arm were 78.4% versus 72.3% with a p-value of 0.061 and 87.3% versus 77.4% with a p-value of 0.011. 
the investigators concluded that the addition of maintenance therapy is a novel strategy that improves the outcome of this group of patients with rhabdomyosarcoma sarcoma and establishes the new standard of care for patients in Europe. The results of this trial, however, need to be interpreted with caution and cannot be generalized. The follow-up of patients is relatively short, and only those who achieved a complete radiographic response after chemotherapy were eligible to be randomized. No information was provided regarding the outcomes of patients who were randomized to receive doxorubicin, and in addition to that, there are only nine cycles of chemotherapy given prior to randomization in this study, whereas COG uses 14 cycles of therapy. And finally, there are slight differences in the eligibility criteria when compared to the previous COG studies. In conclusion, the addition of an irinotecan backbone to standard VAC chemotherapy does not improve the outcome of patients with intermediate risk rhabdomyosarcoma. However, the irinotecan containing regimen offers potential advantages such as outpatient administration of chemotherapy, reduce hematologic toxicity and cumulative cyclophosphamide exposure, and has therefore become the standard backbone for patients with intermediate risk rhabdomyosarcoma in the United States. This concludes this JCO podcast. Thank you for listening. For more original research, editorials, and review articles, please visit us online at jco.org. This production is copyrighted to the American Society of Clinical Oncology. Thank you for listening.